Hi everyone and welcome back in my sun room where it's not very sunny. <laughs> Today we're gonna talk about Litha, also very commonly called the summer solstice and midsummer. It is the longest day of the year and it usually marks the beginning of summer. Now depending on the year or the place on the planet it will happen at a different time. Typically in the northern hemisphere it occurs between the 20th of June and the 24th and in the southern hemisphere between December 20th and December 24th. Come Month. go so as you can notice when it is litha at one end of the world it's yule at the other and when it's yule it's litha on the other side it is a celebration that predates christianity and it's about celebrating the longest day of the year and also the full potency of the sun the warmth joy because isn't it just easy to be happy when the sun is out litha per se is a bit more made of celtic traditions but overall it's a mix of a lot of different traditions at this time of the year the goddess is full with her child that was conceived at beltane the sun god is at his peak at his full potency as i said in his maximum power but we must also remember that he will weaken from that point on. The days are slowly gonna start getting shorter again. At this time, it is time for the two brothers, the Oak King and the Holly King, to battle again to take control. The Oak King is a synonym of daylight and the Holly King of darkness. Therefore, he is the one, the Holly King, who will win this time and take over until Yule when the Oak King will regain his power. Back in the day, almost every agricultural society had a celebration for the summer solstice. The Romans used to honor Juno, the goddess of women and childbirth, who gives us the name for the month of June. Juno June. The Celts honored a goddess that went by different names depending on the place. Etain, Epona, Rhiannon, Eina, and Danu. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Early Europeans would set large wheels on fire and then roll them down a hill into the water. The Celts would light bonfires to represent the sun and honor the sun. They would dance around the fire and then jump over it for luck. And then once the fire had burnt down, they would collect the ashes and scatter them around on the field to bring a good harvest. Still today, people will stay up all night to watch the sun rise. Different stone circles such as Stonehenge were built in such a way that when the sun rises on the summer solstice it sort of rises right through its heart. In the middle of it, it shines in its heart. And it's beautiful and every year usually a lot of people go there just to watch the sun. At the Maya temple of Kukulkan in Chichen Itza. On the summer solstice, the sun will cast shadows on different faces of the building, making it look like it's cut in half. The celebration as midsummer is typically more celebrated in Northern European countries such as Sweden, Denmark, Germany, known as midsummer. And it was of course Christianized in the fourth century after uh, Jesus. The undivided Christian church established the 24th of June to be the birthday of Saint John the Baptist. According to the Gospel of Luke, he was Jesus' cousin. And if his birthday is on the 24th of June, that makes his birthday six months exactly before Jesus's. Jesus, Christmas and or Yule. Interestingly enough, I found this quote uh, by Professor Eamon O. Carragin. The Baptist was conceived six months before Christ. He was not himself the light, but was to give testimony concerning the light. If Christ's conception and birth took place on the growing days, it was fitting that John the Baptist should take place on the lessening days. For the Baptist himself had proclaimed that he must increase, but I must decrease. And I mean, the growing days, the lessening days, doesn't that remind you of someone? I think it reminds me of the Oak King and the Holly King, the light and the darkness. Interesting. Anyway, so several uh, St. John celebrations stayed the same as they were before. So symbols of the summer solstice include the sun, so any representation of the sun, bonfires, flowers, the oak 
for the oak king. In the Celtic traditions, they used oak wood for the bonfires. For the Celtic word for oak is dur, and it means a uh, doorway. <laughs> so it's this sort of idea that on that day, a sort of doorway or path is opened, or passage is open, probably to the Fae, because the Fae is also very important, well, is also a symbol of that holiday. Fairies, little creatures, they are believed to be more accessible on that day, which I'm guessing inspired Shakespeare, because the guy wrote three plays around the summer solstice, and one of them with fairies, which is A Midsummer's Night Dream. Bees are also an important symbol of summer, obviously, for the flowers. In Sweden, another important symbol of midsummer is the Midsummer Stang, Stang. I don't speak Swedish, but it's essentially this thing that looks very much like a maypole and essentially it represents the same thing, which is fertility. Colors associated with the summer solstice are warm colors mostly, so red, yellow, orange, gold, anything that represents the sun, blue for the sky, green for the grass and just plants in general. Now how to celebrate Litha and the summer solstice. That period is a very very good time to take on challenging spells or any challenging projects actually that you want to just do. It's a good time for fire rituals, fairy magic, worshipping any sun deities. It's also a good time to renew or simply buy tools for your craft. But honestly as long as you spend time outside, obviously if it's nice weather but it usually is, but spending time outside and with people, if possible, is always top-notch. You can go for a walk, a picnic in a park, on the beach, if there's a beach. Just spend time outside as much as possible and enjoy the sun. Bonfire, if you can. You can make flower crowns and flower wreaths for your door. If you work with the Fae, you can make offerings to the Fae. You can build a cute little spot for them, cute little fairy houses. But always be careful if you're not used to it. Like Make sure you protect yourself in some way because they're gonna come back. And sometimes they're not always pleasant. And then of course, it's a time to feast and eat. For the food, uh, warm colored veggies are always good, so like carrots, butternut squash, spicy food, because the, you know, the sun gives that little spice, so spicy food food, any spice cakes, any spice to rum or drinks, honey. You can do a barbecue because it's very summery. And ice cream. Yeah, so I think that covers pretty much it all. If you have any more questions, you can write in the comments, ask them. I'll gladly answer if I know the answer. I hope you enjoyed this video and this little bit of information about Litha and the summer solstice. Yeah, so let me know down in the comments what you plan on doing for the summer solstice. Uh, without further ado, I'm gonna wish you a happy summer solstice enjoy the weather enjoy the sun enjoy the energy i'll see you very soon in another video in the meantime you can follow me on all my social medias to see what i do all right the sun is actually coming out so i'm gonna go